Hello and welcome to the Taskmaster podcast. Happy New Year from me, Ed Gamble, host of the Taskmaster podcast. Very exciting episode today. We're back talking about Series 5 and we're talking about Series 5, Episode 5. And we have a very special guest for today's episode. It's the wonderful Mark Watson, of course, one of the stars of Series 5 of Taskmaster and this potentially his most eventful episode. We're talking trousers. We're talking texts. So much happens in this episode. It's, it's, a, re- it's a really fantastic episode. Can't wait to talk to Mark about that. Uh, get down to the nitty gritty. Chat about the tasks. Some backstage goss. That sort of stuff. We might get some facts we've not heard before. It's very exciting. Uh, I mean, let's just let's just crack on with it. You guys know the drill by now. You can get all of Taskmaster on all four. You go and find it. You can watch it. Come back here. Listen to us. Chat about it. That's how it works. Hope you all had a nice Christmas, a new year. Uh, We are back into the thick of it now with Series 5. Only eight episodes, Series 5, so a few more of those left. uh, And then we'll just keep this thing rolling. But for now, this is Mark Watson. Welcome back, Mark Watson, to the Taskmaster podcast. Thank you. Not too many people return, do they? This feels big. Not many returners. You're one of you're one of few returners. Uh, we of course had had to have you back on because we're talking about series five at the moment, um, and S- series five, episode five specifically. This is this is pure Watson. This episode, I'd say, this is you're the you're the you're the headlining star of this episode. Um, <clears throat> I don't like using phrases like headlining star, sure, or <laughs> or uh, guiding force. Or the main yeah. talent. I, I I saw myself very much as part of a collective, as, as you know. But it is true. Okay, that well, a couple of major turning points um, occurred in this episode, and which people still ask me about, and which they will continue to ask me about long after I've, they've forgotten everything else in my life. Yes. Well, when I say when I say headlining star, Mark, I mean you have a couple of real low points. <laughs> yeah. The, the only way to be a headlining star in uh, they often say that on. Um, every day on twitter there's a main character and the the trick is not to be it and that is sort of the same with the taskmaster episode as well if if you become the talking point something terrible has probably happened yes absolutely I, look I, i'm gonna get this out of the way straight away mark because obviously we're we're this is the fifth episode talking about um series five and we've had a lot of people message in saying can you stop being mean about mark can you stop saying that mark wasn't very good at these things because mark actually came second in the whole series and this is such an interesting thing mark a real skill of doing things quite well but in a way that's presented as you doing them quite badly yeah my um i project so much negativity and sort of defeatism that people a lot of people have this uh sort of mandela effect thing where they remember in inverted commas that i was last in the series or at least did really badly but in fact i was still in contention to win coming into the last yeah episode nish is your man nish was the one that was shit at everything i um <laughs> I was, now, don't um, you worry. We we definitely speak about Nish. To in be those fair, that, as well. I, I have heard that covered as well. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. As you say, my sort of, um, I think my unique, or well, it's not unique actually. Other people have done similar, but my legacy on the show is um, having actually sort of perf- scored quite well while still leaving people with the memory of someone that couldn't really do anything. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which is a real, it is a real skill. Um, I, I speaking about Nish, um, I I want to get your hot take on this. Nish's main aim from the start of the series seems to be to drag you down with him. And I think that might be it. I think Nish is so convincing. He even in this episode refers to you and himself as Loser's Corner. Yeah, something which I, I never got into, by the way. I wasn't getting a sign printed, <laughs> put it that way. <laughs> I, <laughs> it, I mean, yeah, I suppose, and it's funny, isn't it? Just the, just the psychology of me sitting next to him. Um, there are loads of screen grabs of us like having a hug or a high five or other things the losers do after a rare moment of triumph. Um, yeah. But yeah, that obscures the fact that most of the time when Nish's one came up on the screen, I would think, thank Christ for this. He's, he's done this worse than me. <laughs> always, always did it worse. Of course, I didn't um, know this. As you, as you know, you've got no idea what's happening to the rest of the contestants while it's underway. So um, many times I would leave the house or, or leave a task thinking, well, it would be impossible to do it worse than that. <laughs> and um, all this time I had a, a, a rival who, who was making it his business to do it worse. But yeah, I, I do think I was tainted by, I still am tainted by association um, in people's <laughs> memory, especially because me and Nish did the song. And so we became seen as a team in people's minds, which is nice. But I had very little yeah. input into some of the things that he did in that show. 
I mean, yeah, even in this episode, we'll we'll find quite a lot of those moments where it's very much thank God Nish is there for everyone. I don't think that's necessarily <laughs> just just you. I think everyone thought thank God Nish is there, and that must yeah, be from episode one. We had a similar thing with David Baddiel where it was very clear from episode one that if you're worried about a coming boss and Baddiel's got your back. Yeah, I remember there were times when Nish turned out to have done something really well, and you felt almost cheated, like that, that this wasn't the deal. <laughs> I, that's not your role <laughs> yeah two or three times you won a task it was all very well from a sort of romantic underdog point of view but you'd be looking over your shoulder thinking well shit in that case who else has fucked it now <laughs> there was that one where he um where you had to kick the basketball he tried to boot the basketball in um through the hoop yeah and it, you know they edited it so it appeared he'd done it first time and and then it uh the reveal was that he had it taken him most of the day to do it but yeah i remember it like everyone falling for that and thinking so this is a like Nish is an occasional genius we can't have this but luckily he wasn't <laughs> yes yeah I mean that was quite early on in the series yeah um so that you've got to put that early in the series when there's still some sort of hope and belief that Nish might do something well if you put yeah, that yeah. episode six no one's falling for that no you couldn't have sold that later in the series it's true no they're going oh you've edited that you've definitely edited that there's no way Nish's, Nish's, uh, Nish's narrative arc was clear by that point <laughs> Um, let's uh, let's crack on and talk about the prize task from this episode. Um, it's well, yeah. the most high octane item. We get, I mean, should we should we get should we get through everyone else's and then talk about yours? Should we should we wait into yours? How should um, we do this? Well, I think it's fair to say that uh, history has regards the others as almost irrelevant. Um, <laughs> yeah. But uh, mind you, I didn't win, of course, or anywhere near it because of Greg's punitive approach to the situation. He's very harsh in this episode, Greg, on everyone, I think. there's a, It's a proper... He's in a proper sort of, like, officious mood. Um, yeah, he, he really let's... was. So, no, I think we should we should look at the other ones because um, yeah, it was... Uh, uh, Sally, why didn't she? But something that was absolutely nuts, as usual. <laughs> yeah, the, the high-octane feed for show pigs. Um, <laughs> it's, so, it's really funny. I mean, I, I suspect what's happened there, because it says high-octane on the packet, is what's happened. She's, she's Googled high-octane. Uh, and then uh, scrolled about three pages down and f- found this pig feed. Yeah, it's um, hard to see how else you'd come ac- across that. And it, as you say, it's a bit suspicious that it literally said high octane on it. Yeah. <laughs> but it's really funny. Just that, I mean, and I think she plays quite well into what Greg finds really funny there. The idea of a pig eating something and then becoming instantly massive is probably right up Greg's street. Yeah, <laughs> it really is, yeah. It was a pleasing image. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it, it, was a, it was a great, it was a great prize effort. Really she always funny. had stuff like that up her sleeve, Sally. You, you, she was probably the most difficult person to guess what she might show up to the studio with, I think. I mean, actually, Bob as well, but at least Bob's thing was normally you, you, dependably weird in a sort of Bob Mortimer way. Whereas Sally, yeah. as you say, she was equally likely to have an ABBA-themed monopoly or to have found something for pigs online. <laughs> Yeah, with Bob, you sort of you don't know what to expect, but it is you're right. It's dependable. He's always on target. He's he's you, in persona. Yeah. You know what you, you know what genre of thing to, to roughly expect. Yeah. Whereas Sally is just like this whirling dervish, absolute chaos. I mean, uh, a force of, of chaos. Shows. Exactly. Force of chaos. Yes. Yeah. So it's the high octane feed for show pigs, which is equally something you can imagine Bob Mortimer bringing in. Um, yeah, and he uh, would have said that. He'd have uttered that phrase with a completely straight face as well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, a phrase that he does utter with a completely straight face is a rocket bike he made for his son. Um, yeah, which was an impressive bit, a bit of gear. And you immediately started thinking, if I if I won the episode, that's something I probably shouldn't take home with me. Yes, no, he did he did very well there. I lo- having now interviewed Bob on Off Menu, uh, and he's talking oh, yeah. about his son on Off Menu as well. Um, I think always in my head, his son's very young, but his son is, I believe, in his twenties. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which well, really like sort the, of reframes the rocket bike, bike it does it? <laughs> the, the something like the rocket bike cements the idea of sort of a six-year-old in, in, in your head really yeah. but uh yeah logic suggests that bob's son is himself an adult now capable of making a rocket bike himself if he wanted to yes uh, as he is uh capable uh himself um of eating the cheaper meats without having a sort of presentational spinning device um <laughs> <laughs> but it's a rocket a rocket bike you've got to put that quite high up i think i think the four points is is pretty well deserving yeah um, I, he's perhaps unlikely not to win when you think about i mean you'd have to say that's more high octane technically than 
uh, the packet of pig stuff. But there you go. This again, as we said, very specific things tickle the Taskmaster's fancy. We all know yes, that. Yes, exactly. Um, Ashling brought a, a custard pie on a garden rake. <laughs> I really, I really like this. I think Ashling gets quite harshly scored in the prize tasks and i say harshly scored that we're five episodes in in four out of five of the episodes so far she's got the three points she's been yeah, straight down the stat. middle i think she felt that she was harshly done by at times as well yeah maybe he felt you, you couldn't you couldn't give all five points to a custard pie um <laughs> but it was clever wasn't it it was really clever it was a lot of fun i like bringing that cartoonish stuff into the real world custard pie on a garden rake bang i think that's you know uh, uh, maybe she suffers from the top two being the top two really you can't you can't mess around with a high octane feed for show pigs no the, the, bike. The, the level was high in this task yeah it was i mean very high we're gonna get we're gonna get to yours and I, we'll uh, get to it no. I, let's i mean let's chat let's get nish out of the way i mean it's another <laughs> absolutely classic piece of shit from nish it's a shame how um, often you have to say let's get nish out of the way in these situations <laughs> isn't it? it was a hands-free mobile phone kit um it's just a massive rubber band uh that uh nish claims cu- cuts off the flow to your brain um yeah you, i mean you I'd... your phone under it i mean i don't know what i think nish genuinely with these prize tasks as well has stuck to the rules that he thinks it should be from his own house he's not gone out and sought out a new thing no i think that's right quite a bit of this stuff had the appearance of having been grabbed by nish quite shortly before his car arrived to take the studio <laughs> and that's you know if you want to be critical at the highest level of taskmaster that's not going to cut it really not when people are doing not things like do. making rocket bikes or certainly in my case um yeah, in fact one of the reasons why i uh generally scored quite highly on the price us was because i accepted that i'd definitely fucked some of the studio stuff up so i, yeah. I immediately started strategizing to claw points back but nish didn't seem to be laboring under any pressure like that <laughs> i think he knew he'd messed up so many of the tasks that there's no point there's no point trying to claw any of it back oh he just lent into it instead yeah part of the reason you're such a brilliant contestant on this mark is that you do go the extra step. I think more so than any other Taskmaster contestant. There's that you're always thinking ahead about how you can make things bigger and the yeah, next I think, step and, and scaling things. I think Alex knew um, when I went, because, he, because we knew each other, that I probably would be in great trouble with anything where you had to fit one thing into another thing or uh, <laughs> remove something from something else or anything like that. Throw a thing, throw a thing into a thing. Throw a thing, move a thing, hold a thing. Uh, yeah. I, th- I think when... <laughs> Tim Key, on, on day one, Key sent me a text saying something like, you should be fine, apart from the things where you have to hold things, open things, <laughs> uh, move things, or in any other way, manipulate things. And uh, I, I basically, so yeah, I think the um, the sort of difference between me and Nish was, basically, I was like a sort of um, troubled, uh, in, not very capable, or like, motor skills contestant but i was like endlessly struggling against my destiny by by trying to like dream big whereas nish uh, accepted his destiny and made made yeah. it his destiny <laughs> <laughs> two very different approaches to losers corner basically <laughs> but you you were not in losers corner remember that is nish no which, constantly no. grabbing your head and pulling it towards his chest and going welcome to losers uh, you're right corner. actually my approach you... to losers corner was to burrow my way out of it with insane amounts of admin <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about some of that admin now, because your uh, prize uh, for this was, of course, a pair of stra- trousers, a pair of trousers um, that you stole from Greg, or let's be honest, you stole from me Greg. To steal yes, from Greg. Um, yes, yeah. I mean, this is this is how you you sort of etched yourself into Taskmaster history, but before you'd even been a contestant at the time. Um, yeah. Th- what's a bit odd about this is, I, I think, I mean, I. I I've never said this before, but I, this is surely the, the place for this information. Um, the, this began as a different as a different task, um, as in the theft of the trousers was actually for something else. Um, right. Uh, it was there, it was a task that was never aired, uh, where you had to go into a well into the um, shed, but they'd made it into a sort of weird mystic Meg type setup with a crystal ball, and the task was to make predictions. Um, right. And you had to make, I don't know, five, I think. And the most far-fetched prediction that came true uh, would uh, would win. So it was a sort of oh, wow. real classic, like very much the sort of task I liked I, um, because I could see myself over the course of several months being able to bring something massive to fruition. Um, 
So I made a series of like predictions that were reasonably wild, but which c- could potentially happen if I if I spent most of the next six months working on it. Um, <laughs> like a, something like I, I predicted that my cat would meet Gary Lineker, or something. My cat would become a would, would meet a major household name, something like that, which I thought was there was a couple of st- things like that. Um, one of them was that I would be able to lure one of the other contestants to a country that they'd never been before. And my plan was to try and get Nish to come to like someone like Belgium or Hungary. I can't remember. I think it was Hungary. I, I found, I, I established that he'd never been to this European country before and then started putting things in place to set up a fake gig there, basically. So I'd put several, like uh, uh, several weeks of work in already. Um, but one of the other predictions I made was that I would be able to steal an item from the Taskmaster because I thought, yes, there's no way I can't accomplish that. Um, and then at a certain point, uh, it, we found out the task was getting dropped from the from the show, and I I don't know the details. It's also not my business, but it's some prediction Sally made was legally compromising in some way. <laughs> That's all I know. Um, and so, because um, not even Horn would would tell me all of the details, but they had to they had to remove that entire. Uh, but by then, I was really attached to the idea of stealing something, and so yeah. when this high octane challenge was laid down, I thought. Well, this sort of still fits the bill. I, d- I couldn't think of anything physically high up in the way that the rocket bike was. So I thought conceptually, this would be pretty exciting. And then I put things in your hands. It was trousers was, you know, much more than I ever, ever dreamed of. As you know, I just asked if you could remove something from his something. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I've got thing. the I've got the original um, Twitter uh, DMs, if um, just for the sake of history, whether I should read some. Yeah, of I didn't out. even have your phone number at the time. This was, this was, you know, I just knew that you were on with him, and we vaguely knew each other. And uh, I, I didn't even know you were a sort of accomplished thief. Really, all that was to come later. <laughs> so this was uh, straight away. Uh, this is from you. Am I right in thinking you're on in Bristol the same night as Greg Davis? And I said, I believe so for Bristol Comedy Garden, right? And you said, that's right. Do you know the big man well? And I said, I do. Do you fancy him? Because I'd happily take him a love note. Um, <laughs> I'd, I'd forgotten this preamble. But imagine if that was the task. <laughs> Seduce the taskmaster. I suppose there well, have been ones like that. You essentially have something quite similar in this episode as well. It's true. I was just thinking that, yeah. <laughs> um, it's, I mean, this, this is great. So, <laughs> as part of Taskmaster, I have to steal something off him. I mean, that's interesting. The way you pitched it to me was as if the task was steal something off the Taskmaster. Yeah, that was slightly disingenuous than... of me, wasn't it, really? What, <laughs> what I meant was, as part of Taskmaster, I've decided to steal something off him. <laughs> <laughs> he isn't aware of this. I'm wondering if I can enlist you in a plan. I mean, I, so uh, not even a minute later, I said absolutely. So this was at 2 p.m. <laughs> on June 6, 2017. And at 2 p.m. on June 6, 2017, I said absolutely. Uh, yeah. uh, however, ob- uh, yeah, it can... The more unexpected and unexpected, the better. However, I obviously don't want to actually fuck his life up too much. Yeah, well, I mean, looking, looking back, I don't know if I would have added that caveat now. <laughs> There's, you give me some more details about it, it. Most surprising thing is the key. So you've sort of made up a whole task here. You put yeah, well, most surprising in quotes. As yeah, if- that, that's right. I, I, I can't remember if I was deliberately... I think I'd basically... I'd convinced myself that to fit the bill, it had to be something pretty certainly that would take him by surprise yeah but yeah you're yeah. right I, I don't really remember this build up that well but um it's obvious that i i was sort of trying to appeal to your sense of adventure um i mean i've I, look i've i've fallen for it hook line i'm so into it so <laughs> you uh, didn't take very much I, persuading as we've said yeah no god no I, I say we'll do my best i guess when he's on would be best uh, I tried to swing a lift, but he's driving from elsewhere. I reckon I could lift his car keys and get something out of there when he's on. <laughs> <laughs> Again, you didn't, exciting. You didn't take long to start thinking like a criminal. <laughs> no, and you're very clear. Just nick anything from him would be a result. Yeah, but I. But obviously, I'm, you don't. You don't mean that because if I stole a pen off him, it wouldn't be very good, would it? No, no I don't think people would still be talking about it in the way that they are about the trousers. Um, so <laughs> you, you take a lot of credit for t- for taking this limited brief and really running with it. But I'm re- I'm so into it. Listen, to- this is this is a great exchange. This is me. Slight hitch. He's staying over, so he's parked at the hotel and is walking over. And I'm sure he won't have a coat on that I can ransack. And then you you had to reply with, "Okay, firstly, don't panic." <laughs> <laughs> Only ever made it big as a burglar by panicking. <laughs> See what there is to work with. This is quite and fun, then- and, and it, it's true. The first rule of, of uh, as far as I know, of organised crime is, is keep your head. Yeah. 
Um, and I said, it's literally like he knows. Our only options are baseball cap, phone, sunglasses, pens, a pair of trousers and assorted bits of paper with notes on. The majority of uh, these things I think he will notice immediately and not leave until he finds. I'm tempted to take his trousers and hope he thinks he left them in his room, but that is a very risky scenario. <laughs> Here we go. And this is where the dream is born. <laughs> I, I remember reading you, that thinking, surely he's not getting away with a pair of trousers. It does because, well, I think I remember Greg saying on the broadcast, who loses their fucking trousers? <laughs> you, you've said, you've suggested the baseball cap. You said the baseball cap seems like something you might give up on. And I say possibly, but he wears it a lot. And I'm worried that if he misses something, then he, it will look like someone here has swiped it. And you, <laughs> and, you, and you reply with, it's almost as if I've created a situation that could cause unpleasantness. <laughs> Which is, is true, I think. Yeah. And um, God, I'd forgotten the extent of the dialogue here. All of this over Twitter DMs. Oh, God, there's so much chat <laughs> while the gig's going on. The, to be fair, um, I should think not that many major thefts um, have been executed via DM, though. <laughs> it leaves a paper trail for a start. And we sort of convince, we convince ourselves that we're, we're going to do the trousers. And then you actually, I don't know if you remember this, you asked me if I could film a small video Um to maybe maybe play in the studio uh, yes because i, I did have an eye on end. being able to prove that we that we'd done this yeah it didn't matter in the end because i I think my only my only worry was um uh the well that it would be difficult to to say definitively these were your trousers but none of this yes. was a problem because his his uh shock at recognizing them in the studio was absolutely palpable that's why it worked so well and also the fact that he remembered losing his trousers obviously <laughs> yeah so I mean I do have the I, the video is still on the message conversation. So what I will do for listeners of this podcast is when this podcast comes out, I will tweet the video of me stealing Greg Davis. Very very good. That is exclusive from, content. That is true exclusive content. Um, and then all I remember is the next day uh, a runner came over to my flat and picked up Greg Davis's trousers. <laughs> yep, amazing scenes. And then, well, fast forward to the actual day of the recording, and I mean the. It's one of the most, it's probably my favourite clip from the series, actually. And it's, the joy of it is it, it just his incomprehension. The bit where I say, I thought the, I thought it would be good to steal something from you. His, his face is so bemused. And then, yeah, you couldn't ask for it. I don't think you could have acted it or scripted it better, really. The way his face clears as he realises yeah. what happened to his trousers that night. We're just very lucky that he had a different pair of trousers basically at the gig. very few people arrive at a gig with separate sets of trousers no it's i've i've, I've not really considered how, quite how odd that is to turn up with a different set of trousers it it implies you think something really bad's gonna happen on stage <laughs> and uh times i've seen greg he's been very much in control of things uh but yeah it, it does you know if it had been a baseball cap or any uh smaller even if it was an item like the cap that he's very fond of it wouldn't be quite the same trousers are such no. a such an imp- probable thing to be able to nick off somebody it had a like a visual quality to it really yeah and they're such long trousers as well so the the black long trousers against the white background when it gets put up on the screen is is really funny something really special and it is yeah. instant admission that the uh that the trousers were his it was all perfect really and the only sort of sour note is that is that we got one point uh i say we because half of that point is yours but it's, you know yes. it's it, um it should have been added to your tally for the, the when you were on. Really it. Should be. Or I mean deducted is more likely. Or deducted, isn't it? yeah. Um so it was one point for you, sadly. Two points for Nish, uh, three points for Ashling, four points for Bob, and five points for Sally. Bob, it's a rocket bike that I made for my son. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. Um, I, I did a radio phone in where I claimed that my son was um, a fast runner. <laughs> and another parent from the school phoned, phoned in and said, not as fast as my son, and he was telling the truth. So I challenged him to speed cycling, and this is the rocket bike I made for my son. Whoa! <laughs> and your son, you lit it, and it did propel your son? Yes, well, no, he propelled it, but it gave it that kind of vibe of, you know, that feeling of speed. Sort of jazz hands. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, it was a bike like that, yeah. 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 Hey, let's talk about task one. Put the biggest thing inside this balloon. The balloon must be successfully inflated, tied, and bigger than your head. You have ten minutes. Your time starts now. Yeah, so here now... is an example of an, a task that on paper <laughs> I could only ever get one point for. Uh, and yet... <laughs> 
<laughs> and yet you take home the big four. This is one of those. This is one of those tasks where you just have to finish it. That's the yeah. That's the advice that you should give to every person who does Taskmaster is just finish it, and you never know because it will probably will be someone who doesn't. Yeah, it's always sort of people make a joke out of the uh, all the information is in the task thing, but there's a reason why they say that. Very very often the the uh, fine print of the task costs people and as you yeah. say here you had to have done all the things um to get on the scoreboard and but and, uh, although um although I, well, alex was certainly been aware of my um intense dislike of, of balloons <laughs> and, and suspicion of them i don't think this was done maliciously but um it was just because of the and it won't have been for everyone but for me this was one of the first tasks of all as well this was my first day oh, really um, yeah, because I, I remember thinking, ah, fuck, there's always a sort of, there's always a, a thing of the series. It turned out to be coconuts, of course. But at the time I thought, what if there's about three balloons every day? Uh, <laughs> I um, we'd done, we'd done a preliminary task, which I did quite badly as well, where you had to name celebrities. And that was never used again. I think that was sort of a warm up. But then, yeah, one of my first formal tasks was this. And it was quite a harsh baptism. Um, but it was also, in the end, a good example of her lateral thinking, I suppose, in Taskmaster, because I had yeah. literally no option but to, uh, well, get someone to do it for me. <laughs> get someone to do it for you, and yet still look, I think, the most scared I've ever seen a man look. I hated when it. Someone, I... Else was, someone else was blowing up a balloon and tying it. You looked like you watching were watching it. Hereditary at the cinema. I do not like to watch balloons being blown up, but especially I don't like watching it when... <laughs> when there's, you know, points at stake, the combination of tensions. I mean, it was awful. <laughs> Obviously, um, the guy uh, was the same guy who was to carry me uh, in another episode and then yeah. disastrously put me down because I forgot <laughs> the rubric of the task. So another thing which people talk about constantly to me. Yeah. Um, so he was a real figure in my um, time on Taskmaster. And I, I did talk to Alex about it afterwards and say, you know was that all right because I, I sort of didn't really do that and uh he basically said you couldn't have the crew do every task for you yeah. but <laughs> within reasonable limits it was all it was sort of uh fine and, yeah, and yeah. That is, it doesn't because it specifically doesn't say you must you must inflate the balloon it says the balloon then must be successfully inflated it, yeah, it deliberately avoids that most taskmaster tasks are phrased in that in that sort of passive uh, time, and, you know, there are plenty of examples of history of people basically subcontracting the work or just paying yeah. someone else to do it or whatever. So I, I didn't feel like it was cheating exactly, but I also didn't feel like it was very, a very good. I certainly didn't think I'd uh, get up in the, uh, the high scores. Cause I'd reckon without the idea that most people wouldn't be able to actually to complete the task, as you say. Yeah. I mean, it's, well, it, there was, there was, fa there was failure all around. Bob just, doesn't tie up the balloon in time but again it's he's very bob about the whole thing he's not bothered really is he he no he it, does his best he's very funny along the way and then if he doesn't do it he doesn't care yeah it's kind of amazing that he won well, it's actually not amazing i was gonna say it's, it's amazing that he won our series with that attitude but in a sense that is the perfect attitude you want to be capable of genius but also prepared to just uh let some be relaxed enough to not overdo it yeah. i think he's in that perfect sweet spot of uh being mad enough to like hug Alex in the boot of his car or something, but also <laughs> when something went wrong, he didn't mind at all. <laughs> yeah, no, not at all. And quite often, if he doesn't want to, if he if he's not, if nothing strikes him, like with sheer inspiration, he just sort of does quite a good thing, but then just lets it pass. You know, he's yeah, not, there were he's a couple of worried. There were tasks like that where I remember the one where he had to sneeze, and both Ashton and Sally just didn't just didn't do it. If I remember, just couldn't be. Honest. And again, when. When we were watching that back, I found that incomprehensible because, as we've said, I chased up every point like a lunatic. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sally uh, has a disaster as well. Um, I mean, starts off. Yeah. Starts off by saying hello there, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> it makes you wonder if that was quite early in her Taskmaster schedule as well, or whether she was just having one of the days when she was mad, which was, did happen a couple of times. <laughs> Uh, so she starts by saying hello there Andy and then goes very ambitious by trying to get like a bell jar into the balloon and the the little statue of a man and all of this stuff that's clearly never going to fit into a balloon and settles on grapes and then 
spectacularly fails to blow the balloon up to the size of her head anyway. So Yeah, yeah. I mean, sometimes it pays to be that ambitious on Taskmaster, but th- that was perhaps never going to work. <laughs> yeah. No, no, exactly. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's the same energy as a couple of weeks ago. She, with the task where you had to get the ball out of the tube, she started by for some reason, putting a funnel in the top of the tube and then filling it up via the funnel, which made absolutely no difference whatsoever. Yeah, that's right. I remember seeing her approach to quite a lot of tasks, thinking, initially thinking, this is is this genius? And then after a couple of minutes of VT, you think, I know, it's fine. (laughs) It's fine. (laughs) No, we'll be all right. It's it's just another shit way of doing it, but more complicated (laughs) than our one. (laughs) Um, (laughs) With hindsight, it was absolutely inevitable. Nish would burst the balloon. Obviously, it was. Yeah, and I love it so much. And you know what? I'm very surprised to hear this was on people's first days because when it explodes, there's such a resigned sort of sadness in his eyes that it's almost like it's the last <laughs> task he did. Like, Well, I think that some people might have had them in different sequences from others because you're right. It, does, it doesn't feel like this is Nish's first rodeo when the, no. <laughs> when the balloon bursts. <laughs> and also, he laughs when the balloon explodes and that laugh is the recording of the laugh that they use for his first prize task in oh, episode right. one, which that's is right. the loop yeah. of his laugh. Yeah. Um, yes, so... which again, <laughs> it again, sort of just makes you wonder whether his head was ever in the right place to win prize <laughs> tasks, really. Um, but of course, it, someone had to explode it and it was always going to be Nish. I absolutely love it. Um, and Ashling uh, gets the victory by filling her. I love this lateral thinking of uh, putting all the ingredients for a bruschetta into a balloon. And then Me too. It's the size of a whole bruschetta. That was brilliant. Deserved the points. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. It was five points for Ashling's bruschetta. Uh, and um, blowing up the balloon to the size of her head, she managed it. She was initially worried as well, Mark, that she wouldn't be able to blow the balloon up, but she got stuck in and she got it done. She demonstrated um, nerve and ingenuity and also a certain amount of uh i suppose cooking prowess yeah you could mm-hmm. say she deconstructed the baguette yeah and stuck it in a balloon so you have to say she deserved at least five points she's almost got more points because three people didn't get any at all but luckily yeah. that's not yeah. how it works are you any better with balloons now mark uh no not not really but at least i know um that if i'm ever tasked with blowing one up i just I'm allowed to look for a sort of a, a, a kindly bald man nearby and give it to him. So that's a life learning from Taskmaster. Can I say, Taskmaster, I'm a little bit like fed up, do you know, <laughs> because I don't believe Sally blew her balloon up. I did. We I never did. have controversy on the show. This is awesome. What are you complaining about, Bob? Because Sally's balloon went down. It's these no, two. It was just that my only problem was tying the balloon. I, I would say, Bob, that it says inflate, from which is from the Latin. Fiatare, which means to blow. So one could say that water yeah. didn't... I mean, if we're being pedantic. Yeah, well, if we're, if we're being pedantic, you put some grapes in it, didn't blow it up. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think, Bob, um, that it says anywhere that you weren't allowed to ask someone else to tie it up. No, but I was... And all I'm saying is I don't want any credit for it. I just wanted to say I'm fed up. <laughs> <laughs> Task two, generate a water cooler moment involving this water cooler. Most remarkable water cooler moment wins. You have one hour. Your time starts now. Uh, it's another. This this is one I think about a lot. Um, do you want to know what my instinct was the first time I watched this as to what I'd do, Mark? Yeah, and what would you? All of us think like this when we're watching other people's tasks. Yeah. Yeah. My instinct was to try and drink the whole thing. <laughs> God, that would have been... Weirdly, that didn't occur to any of us because that I suppose that is route one, isn't it? Well, it would have been impossible, and I potentially would have died because it's quite a lot. Yeah, of but that's there. that's probably worth at least three points. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you've been hospitalised, couldn't be more route one. I guess that's my skill in that I I'm so route one. I I it it doesn't even occur to other people. Well, it, and it worked for you that a lot of the time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> for all the cleverness that Taskmaster rewards, sometimes you should just do the most stupid thing that immediately pops into your head. Um, um, there were no, no one tried that, but there were some incredible, uh, incredible water cooler moments. Let's let's talk. Let's talk now about yours, Mark. Um, well, because this is this is an example of your technique on Taskmaster, which is to go high, high risk, high reward. But then yeah, occasionally and, fail spectacularly. Yeah, this is this is an example of that backfiring. Um, so the, I mean the it it started really well. Having 
finding someone which which i did within the 20 minutes to to come and collect the or was it 20 minutes i certainly within the time limit i legitimately yeah. found someone on twitter who lived close enough to come and pick up the water cooler in his car so very good start it was very funny watching the gates open and the guy show up and load it into the, into the boot <laughs> um and but the the trouble i had was um i there was a point about I suppose halfway through the Taskmaster, or actually more than that, I guess. But anyway, there was certainly a moment where um, the water cooler project had stalled quite badly. It made it no further than about uh, Surrey. But also there were these texts every day. Um, at the time, I was still trying to work out how to get Nish to Hungary or wherever it was. Um, there was another task, which I won't go into the details of, because I, I reckon they might use it the idea again one day, but another task which involved quite a bit of, forward planning which I was sort of giving a certain amount of thought to uh, then of course the prize tasks when they came in I, I put a little bit of work into as well I had to, ordering that hat the jigsaw puzzle. so the, the, there were a couple of mornings when I woke up and the sheer volume of Taskmaster admin <laughs> on, on my plate was overwhelming this, and, um, and this happens to no other Taskmaster no. <laughs> that no one else, just... everyone else films their tasks then there's like a few months before the studio you get to the studio and you go oh I don't even remember doing that That's it right. was it's... constantly on your mind for months there's no I don't remember doing that from me no I, I was uh, reliving every task that had gone wrong and desperately trying to engineer every task that still could go right the, the thing when I look at and this again is why I don't I never did deserve the loser's corner thing because when I look at the amount of stress that Taskmaster did not cause Nish or Bob or really any of them I, you know I, I uh, of course the classic example is the text which I believe that everyone else was also yes. doing but conceptually that's how I was with all of Taskmaster I believed everyone was living it as much as me so the water cooler thing basically was the one that got away a bit because there were a couple of moments where there were a couple of moments I heard it had been successfully that it successfully changed hands but then there was someone that I just couldn't get in touch with for a couple of months <laughs> and um I think again I didn't have phone numbers I was trying to do it with a sort of ungodly mixture of Twitter and Facebook and who knows yeah. what and a, a point came when I just accepted to myself uh the water cooler is not gonna go all the way around Great Britain and come back again and ha having made my peace with that I basically thought it, it's funnier if it if it basically did, did nothing at all and so we went with that yeah. instead <laughs> It is. It is really funny that it goes thirty-three miles in five months. It's very funny. Yeah, I, I mean, thought it, the issue is you're relying on other people there. Yeah, and that's such a big. It's so big. It's that's such a the big thing. thing. If it had been, if I could have, well, if I could have coordinated it, it would have been one of the most amazing things ever seen. But yeah, it was such a. It's even bigger than it seemed. Really, like even watching someone put it in their car brought home how unlikely it was that it could do an entire circuit of the country. <laughs> and uh, it only took one person to think, oh, shit, I've still got this water cooler. Hopefully he'll forget about that. And I didn't forget, but yeah, nor could I quite raise it. Even I couldn't quite fit another project into my life at that point. And so yeah. the water cooler, unfortunately, uh, as you say, just just a, an average of a few miles a month. And you could have done more just in Ubers, basically. I mean, it is, it, it's so funny that the comparison of your efforts to Nish in this is the, the perfect comparison, really. Yeah. So you tried to orchestrate the water cooler travelling around Great Britain and spent months trying to make that happen. And Nish um, ra ran up to it and kicked it. Yep. <laughs> and got more points. And got more, uh, crucially, got more points. And this, I actually think Nish's might be even more route one than my thought of drinking it. It is... It's something I talk to Nish about a lot. I, he gets bored of me bringing this up, this this task, because it makes me laugh so much that in his head he's gone, I'm going to kung fu kick it, it's going to be brilliant. And then he absolutely does not have the physical prowess to pull that off whatsoever. Yeah, this is not an example of Nish underdoing a task or, or for comic effect. I think he thought this would be one of the moments of the series. Yeah, <laughs> you can see it in his eyes. But I don't know, well, Alex like, even says in the studio that after Nish did it, he was so he was so happy with it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know where he thought the bar was for water cooler moments, but uh, I don't know. It's a, it's a fine line between claiming something as a martial arts demonstration and, and just, as you say, running up to it and kicking it, really. And no amount of slow-mo can completely take you over that no. threshold i don't think no and even in the slow-mo you can see i mean they've done they've done so much of an edit on it they're such a good team for making things uh, seem better than they are but there's absolutely i mean 
Now that ends up looking about as good as it was, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 so funny, and the fact he gets four points, I think Greg's being very generous to interpret that as it being so shit that everyone would be talking about it at work the next day. Well, I think if if that's how we're doing it, mine should have got five points because mine was definitely yeah. the, the least successful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. But it was um, sort of nice almost to see Nis get points by that by that stage because he, with the best one in the world, you weren't looking over your shoulder at him as a contender anymore. So my mindset by now was almost Nish getting points takes them off off other people, you know, who might be more of a threat. Yeah. Um, Ashling, again, if you're judging it in terms of things going wrong or things being terrible, this deserved more points because I've got no... <laughs> it's just the fact she'd set up this scene and you never see where she was truly going to go with it. She's got all the, the ice and the chocolate and all of that. Where is she going to go with that before... Yeah it all falls over and smashes, which is great. I love that it smashes. Yeah, yeah. But but yeah, in, in the end, we'll never know what that would have been, basically. That was just, uh, again, joins the the Taskmaster legacy of things where something just got broken in the end and nothing really happened. <laughs> uh, it's very funny. I think, yeah, just such a disaster that it deserved more. Um, and Bob uh, Bob finds, finds an apple on top of the water cooler and then splits the apple into two perfect halves with his bare hands. I mean, look, it's a classic Mortimer trick. I'd say Bob is obviously an amazing Taskmaster contestant, very well-deserved winner in this series. But this perhaps is the only task where I've seen him phone in a little bit because that is something he has done before and to just well, put an apple on top of the water. Yeah, cover. if you know that that's in his locker, then that's less impressive, yeah. uh, as you say. Um, and uh, yeah, you, you can imagine it was quite a difficult... like it wasn't immediately clear what to do obviously like a lot of tasks so yes uh my brain in the end went to the most like extravagant solution but it looks like bob sort of thought about it for five minutes couldn't really come up with anything and then went fuck it there's that thing i can do with the apple yeah <laughs> <laughs> and it is a good thing it is impressive but he he also seems surprised in the studio when he hears that it's had five hundred thousand views on youtube so but he didn't realize quite how many people would recognize it from would i lie to you no, but the thing is, what I like to you is, is a very successful, well publicised yes. show yeah, that yeah. a lot of people watch. Uh, it, BBC show, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, on the BBC, yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. on the telly. <laughs> yeah, I think you can really only you can really only bring that out once in a uh, famous national TV show. But there you go, he got yeah. he, he got some points, and that's how you win. Still Just got three keep points. keep clocking them up. Yeah, this is this is part of Greg's innate respect for Bob. I think gives him maybe bumps him up a point now and again. Yeah, yeah, and, and also it is impressive, and there would have been some people, I suppose, who hadn't seen it. So yeah, difficult to argue with, but you don't feel yeah. like you don't feel like Bob used the entire twenty minutes on that. Basically, it was an hour actually. Oh, that's right, it was. That's how I managed to get someone to go and pick it up. Yeah, I don't reckon that's an hour's work. No, <laughs> unless it, uh, quite a lot of it is picking a good apple. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. He Unless, had to get a, an entire bushel and sort of pick through them. Maybe, maybe he uh, shinned up into a tree and found an apple there. But then you'd like to see more of that on film if he did. <laughs> um, and something else there's no arguments about is the fact that Sally got five points for pretending to have sex with the water cooler in the caravan. Yeah, well, <laughs> I mean... this was one of, um, I think it's fair to say, several moments where Sally uh, solved a problem in a very sexual way. <laughs> and. Um, <laughs> Few people would have begrudged her the points for it. I think um, it was, it was pretty it was, incredible. It was probably it was the best one, but also it, you know it was fairly clear being around her that she did she was working some stuff out basically during that. <laughs> uh, so I think she you know regardless of the points that she she just did she came to work that day always likely to have sex with something like a water cooler. I think and, you know <laughs> what I absolutely love is when it finishes playing and you cut back to the studio. And of all the people to be sat there having to watch that and then be sat next to the lady who did it, uh, you, Nish and Alex Horn, three of the most uncomfortable men around that sort of thing I could possibly imagine. Yeah, none of us were quite sure what to do with it. But at least at least we've been around, we've been with Sally by now enough to know that, that, that this wasn't completely unexpected. I think Horn's discomfort yeah. is the most funny because he'd seen it and knew about it, but still, still was like that, yeah. <laughs> Again, a lovely job by the team on the edit of that. Yeah, um, beautiful. The water pouring out the door, all of that sort of stuff. Was it it stuff. was great. I remember us all being pretty stunned by that VT in the studio, actually. There was no doubt where the point was going, uh, where the points were going on that one. Yes, and the same caravan where I, uh, but three years later, uh, had sex with a pot of hummus. 
So it's a, it's uh, a place where stuff can happen, eh? <laughs> it's got a certain awesome. vibe to it. <laughs> so it's five points for Sally, four points amazingly for Nish, Nish's kick, um, three points for Bob's apple, uh, two points for Ashling's fishing disaster, uh, and sadly one point uh, for your travelling water cooler, Mark. Yeah, I'm really up against um, it now. One point for that, and one point for the theft of Greg's trousers. And you're starting to think well, I'm not. I'm not going home with the swag here. Your water cooler moment. Well, it was fucking what water cooler, wasn't it? <laughs> I didn't. I didn't have a better idea. No, you didn't. And then I kept saying I probably shouldn't do this, and then you guys, there were a whole like a ring of men going, "No, I think you probably yeah. should." <laughs> I bet they were. Ring of men sounds. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then once I'd established that as a kind of theme for the show, but now we're like into episode five. It's kind of almost dull that I did that, isn't it? Not for I, me. I don't think Not it, for me. I don't think anyone found it dull, Sally. No, mm. no, no it's it was incredible. definitely unexpected. Gosh, yeah, and quite a climax to the whole thing. <laughs> This is your bonus task. Send the taskmaster an anonymous cheeky text message every single day for the next five months. Your time starts now. I mean, this is just, this is well, heartbreaking. Mark. What is there to say about this, really? I, I mean, um, uh, yeah, I, I uh, with hindsight, it is difficult, as I think I've said to you, I might have said before, it's difficult to believe that I didn't. No, because it's not as if it's the only time on Taskmaster someone's been the only person doing a task. But yeah, um, they do create an atmosphere where you sort of don't, where you don't really question it. Um, yeah. And also, I mean, not that implausible that everyone would be doing it because, but as I think I've said, I might have said to you, I might have said it when I was on the task, uh, the podcast the other time, there was, um, with hindsight, a slight clue, which was that when I was out for a drink with him one time, Alex did ask how are the, how are the daily texts going? And if we'd all been doing that, it would have been quite strange for him to ask that. Yes, um, yeah. And then, but I still didn't, I still didn't um, clock anything from that. I assumed, I, and as I, I think we have also discussed this, I didn't think they were, they were going to Greg and disrupting his life either. I assumed yeah. that I was just texting the, the production team or, yeah. uh, you know, that some unfortunate person was carrying this phone around and they were being logged. Um, because again, I thought we were all doing it, and there was no way the actual Greg could be getting of course. Uh, five of those every day. But the solution was, in a way, simpler. It, it was him, and it was just me. <laughs> <laughs> you think about it, and of course, you are the only person in that lineup that would do it and stick to it. You're well, that's the only also person. that's also true. But I don't, I don't think I knew that either, because as we've said, I was oblivious to. Uh, how much I was over trying compared with certain other people on the team. Yeah, Nish wouldn't have got beyond the first week, I don't think. And um, because, of course, it did, you know, it compromised your life. I had to, t I was sending them all from a, a pay as you go phone that they'd given me. So I had that had to come everywhere with me. Um, I, I also had the numbers stored onto my phone so that if I did uh, forget, which did happen sometimes, I could send yeah. them from my phone. Um, then there was the, the inconvenience that I went on Bear Grylls Celebrity Island for one month of the period and I had to pre-write uh, 28 texts for my partner to send. Um, and uh, I didn't know about that. Oh, yeah. I, <laughs> there's, there's, a, there's a whole month of the text, which, which, uh, which I, had to, um, I had to leave her with a sheet of 28 texts. Um, oh, my God. And, and, and Mark, that, I mean, that, if anyone's seen Bear Grylls the Island... You were at some stages, I'd say, on death's door. There'd be times when I was, um, yeah, sort of shivering from head to foot, considerably under my uh, optimum body weight, hadn't eaten or slept for about six days, and it would come into my head, I hope those texts are still going. <laughs> it's, what an awful situation if you'd it's, passed um, away on Bear Grylls' island and then a text still arrives from you the next my, day. Yeah, I could have been, I could have been dead for... for well, up to 28 days, and there'd still be communications from me to Greg <laughs> saying things like, hey, cutie, I have a big penis, yeah. <laughs> it, and oh, those man. those would have been technically my last recorded utterances as well. So uh, oh. really lucky that I, I, did, I don't think I'd want that to be my... Well, I was going to say, I don't know if I'd want that to be my sort of final footprint in the world, but actually, I think I've probably... Pretty good. Other than the song with Nish, the texts are sort of among my most celebrated contributions to human civilization. So I suppose I shouldn't be ungrateful, really. I mean, it's just uh, the only way that that could have ended is getting zero. I points. think so. And I think that makes it, that makes it 
more memorable as well. Yeah, I think it's the perfect stunt for that reason. People often assume that I'm, um, you know, bear a grudge about it. I, I think a part of Alex still does. He couldn't look me in the face, certainly uh, during the recording. <laughs> um, because I, there was a, a, a camera break or something like a reset shortly before we did this, I think, because, I suppose because all the cameras were on me for, for uh, that period. <laughs> and um, I remember Alex muttering something like, now, I don't know how you're going to feel about what happens next. And, um, but I didn't know what he meant because I didn't even know it was the texting task. You never know what task is under discussion next. I was just aware yeah. that I was getting quite a bit of attention from the production crew. Uh, that's it. Even after Alex had said that, I... I still, but then you, I did start to feel like something wasn't wasn't right. And then um, I think when they showed the VT with me me alone opening the envelope and reading the 150 text, I started to realise then, and I was absolutely thrilled. Of course, I I, I, I mean horrified, but also to be to uh, to be part of a moment like that was was brilliant. Yeah. I, I couldn't start laughing. I couldn't get past how how stupid and funny it was, basically. Hey, sexy. <laughs> Just getting in touch. This is the first of 150 messages. You're in for a treat. <laughs> <laughs> that is quite cheeky, but uh, look how... I'm not very far into the book now of, of your 150 texts, and yet, page 12, I have a big dick. <laughs> <laughs> It's cheeky, isn't it? Very cheeky. Uh, is that cheeky? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, it's the sort of edgier side of cheeky, yeah. There were different sorts of cheeky as well. You said, uh, yeah. can you lend me 50 quid? <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I mean, cheeky could, you know, I thought yeah. it might just mean impertinent. Are you going to give him a point? You asked him to 150, he did 148. Oh, then I can give him no point. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do task three, which is make the tallest tower of cans on this table. Highest tower wins. Also, whilst building your tower, you must shake Alex's hand and say you're from a different country once every 10 seconds. Alex will blow his whistle every 10 seconds. Your time ends when you fail to shake Alex's hand and say you're from a different country before Alex blows his whistle. Your time starts when Alex blows his whistle. Now, this this is in a way very much up my street because I knew I would not run out of countries. Um, but... On the other hand, uh, as we've seen, something like constructing a very basic structure out of cans is, is not yeah. up my street. So this is a, a classic <laughs> um, clash of styles between someone that didn't really bother with the task but could easily make a tower. And um, yeah, I well, I think it came up. I mentioned I managed to name half of the countries in the world, but could never yeah. get the tower of. I couldn't even get one more. In a, it was a brilliant. It's, it's classic Taskmaster. This I think a, a real um, Sisyphean. Task. The number of times I returned to that table only for the tower to collapse again was... Uh, what, 92 and... countries, Mark? You named 92 countries yeah, and I, got I, six cans. Yeah, incredible, really. If, if you put me and Bob together, you, it would have been, you know, you, you could have accomplished a, a tower of literally any height in the world, I would have thought. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I was, I think part of it was, I mean, I love sort of, you know, geographical trivia and stuff like that. So I was, I was thinking... I was so focused on each country as it came along that I that every time I went up to the table, like a like a, a a dog or something, like an animal, again and again failing to learn a lesson in an experiment. I every time I went up to the tower, I would think, "Oh yeah, shit, shit, the tower." Um, but of course, you had to get back in time to shake his hand every time. Is it, yeah. this was one of my favourite tasks because of the number of taskmaster elements that it brings together. Basically, it's it's. It's classic horn. This really to make you do think about so many things at once. I was terrified of not getting back in time to shake his hand. Um, I was terrified of, of just country. panicking yeah. and saying Dubai or so, like something that wasn't a, technically a country, which I think someone did get away with, but not really, you know. And so in the middle of that, the architecture of the tower just I never got beyond the, the basics. Um, yeah, I, yeah, it's but you still you still got the five points, and it was very impressive that you named ninety two countries versus yeah, Bob's three, who just a very confident display from Bob. The only person, and this is something else that makes it a classic Taskmaster task. The only person to spot that the standing in the noose was not a necessary part of the task. Astonishing. I mean, yeah, if I that, that's it's the equivalent of me realizing you put the light on in the ro rainbow painting task. I suppose you you do have yes. these moments of clarity. And, but again, it, sh it was probably, I wouldn't be surprised if it occurred to viewers um, 
about the news or at least quite a lot of viewers because you know it's fair it's a real elephant in the room that that's not part of the wording but again in the heat of it especially with with like with him blowing that whistle again and again you, you do you've lost your yeah. marbles quite quickly but um, yeah i look back with fondness on that on that country's task I, I that was very much the sort of thing uh that i liked doing taskmaster for although again when it when it was played back again i assumed everyone would have had no trouble naming countries um but just struggled with the actual architecture because again you you, you don't remember that everyone isn't like you so when the vt went well, on with Nish, me doing more and Nish more did countries pretty well yeah, yes. Nish did pretty well with the countries. He's, a, you know, that's the sort of thing Nish is good at as well. But again, uh, not so good at the building. But he still got five points, which is pretty good. A rare yeah. sort of three points Deserved. for Nish. He, he tends to be uh, uh, hanging around at the lower end normally, the, the occasional five points. Um, Sally, I mean, this is a confident display of absolute nonsense from Sally. This is the person you're referring to when you uh, when you mentioned Dubai, I think. I yeah. Think most countries she names aren't countries, or yeah, the which was, she does name, she then immediately repeats. Very much part of the task not to do that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's, it's so funny it, that she, the first three that she names, two of them are Italy. Yeah, I, I feel like you know she's sort of lucky to survive that. Really, yeah. I think most people, including Sally, could name more countries than Italy twice, given that opportunity. So <laughs> you have to wonder. But the, yeah, as we've said, the the brief was a, was complicated. The task was complicated. I could see how you'd lose it slightly in, in that situation. Yeah, I think she just went, she just remembered one thing, which was the cans and countries, and she just did a sort of approximation of that. It wasn't the only time Sally would do some of the task, but leave out a, a crucial bit. Everyone was guilty of that, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's very funny. Um, and Ash, poor Ashling. Let's talk about Ashling. This is another absolute harsh judgment from Greg, I think. Yeah. Uh, it's so it's so funny, though. The fact she gets one can in, misses the first handshake, and they let her carry on. And they She names so many countries, and they didn't even show it. Yeah, yeah. She, she was very harshly dealt with here, I think, especially given what other people did get away with on the same task. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the fact that it's it's just the fact they they only say you named all these countries and you got a really high tower and they didn't even show an edit of it. She's so no, upset. There are times when uh, I mean I, I don't think anyone's got a leg to stand on complaining wise when you think about the, that text thing again. Just to briefly go back to that, <laughs> but uh, th there are times for all of us on Taskmaster where you um yeah it's acknowledged that you did something really well but you don't even get to see it and uh, it really is bittersweet that knowing the viewing yeah. public just has to imagine it. <laughs> so it was sadly one point uh, for Ashling's one can, two points for Sally's two cans, three points for Nish's five cans, and six cans for you and Bob, and that was the five points. Um, but if it was done on countries, you'd win by some considerable distance in yeah. 22 versus three. Still proud of that, though, that that to turn things around for me on the, uh, on the episode. Oh, you... Buggers. I am from Italy. Australia. From Italy. From Alaska. From Abu Dhabi. Abu Dhabi. <laughs> Abu Dhabi. <laughs> from Dubai. From Beirut. Oh. From uh, 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 Kuala Lumpur. <laughs> Portugal. Portugal. <laughs> Poland. Denmark. Georgia. Poland. Denmark. Georgia. Doha. <laughs> Please, God, let that be a country. Well, let's talk about Find the Fins, the live task. Find the Fins, you, must, you may each ask one question to one person. Your question must not pertain to the nationality of the people. You must then write which number you think is a fin. Most accurate fin finder wins. Again, quintessential Taskmaster stuff, yeah. this, really. A Scandinavian. Um, There's a Scandinavian person you have to find. Very yeah. Taskmaster. Very Taskmaster, this. And um, classic high-stake stuff as well, because despite all of my misfortunes on this episode, you're thinking, I'm just a fin away from, uh, from glory here. <laughs> <laughs> and you got it. You got the five points. You found the fins. Uh, Ashling and Nish got the four points. Bob and Sally got two points. I don't want to talk about this too much. It's fairly straightforward. You know, I think everyone asked yeah. decent questions. I, I think, though, was it Sally asked someone how to say something in Finnish? Which yeah. I don't, I think if something pertains to someone's nationality, that's probably quite high up, isn't it? For sure. Yeah. And 
you'd think that would have been enough to, to do it really yeah um yeah. but uh and also yeah i i don't quite know how looking back i, I did but i do remember feeling fairly confident about the fins I, this is i just this, i didn't don't think i factored in the questions that much i think i just at least one oh, of really them, you just saw them and you were like those two are finished I, at least one of them I, there was one just uh, difficult to be more scientific than this but just looked so finished <laughs> I, I, I just couldn't see past that <laughs> is that a skill that you've employed since taskmaster could you spot a fin on the street or pick one out i mean I, I, since taskmaster i have i've been to finland went there the following year on holiday but it's not much of a skill there of course because uh, most people are <laughs> fin. So, uh, there it's not really seen as a party trick um <laughs> no actually you tried I, though i'd imagine when you when you arrived of course like, i did a bit of it in the yeah. airport but it soon wore off <laughs> yeah um no actually I, I, like a lot of the things that i um demonstrated surprise prowess on in taskmaster it's not a very transferable skill unfortunately and that's just not me that's everyone you might come away from yeah. taskmaster sort of having found that you're incredibly good at making a, a machine for throwing coconuts or uh disguising yourself or, but actually yeah very few of these tasks um stand you in good stead really but i was it was a great feeling when the fin when the reveal happened though um and uh yeah of course it won, I mean, you, the ep. It won you the episodes incredibly despite everything despite all of the, the tribulations of this episode yeah but this is what I'm talking about mark you had such a what on the face of it was a disastrous episode and you still somehow won yeah, it's. Um, I do remember feeling quite, quite proud. I, I actually, and feeling quite competitive. I remember looking hard at those fins, thinking, uh, you know, I deserve this. I deserve this redemption story. This will be. Uh, and um, yeah, so this is probably my most memorable episode because, and again, this is what we talk about, you know, about um, people's perceptions. No one remembers. I don't think that I won the, the same episode that I was cheated of the trousers. Yeah, it's points amazing. In. But that is a 16, it's a 16 points. It's a story of human triumph over adversity, basically. Totally. Yeah. Um, and uh, again, when you look at the effort levels, the accumulated effort levels of all those tasks, me versus Mortimer, you'd have to say I did. I earned that episode. Definitely. It was 16 points for the victory. Ashling second, 15 points. Bob and Sally on 14 points. And of course, thank God for Nish. It's him on 13 points at the bottom. Um, and at the moment, Mark, five episodes in, you're you're in the lead. You're in the lead in the series by five points. I know, mad, really, to think about. And um, I didn't even do that badly in the final episode, but but Bob just had a bit too much for me. I think still going to the end of that episode, still had a mathematical chance, though. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, God knows what would have happened if I'd won and gone through to the, the champion of champions because I don't think I would have been comfortable in that environment. There, I'm the niche, surely. <laughs> we we had loads of emails, Mark, but a lot of them I think we've we've covered. They're about all the things that you could uh, you could imagine. They're about. Yes, um, I can we had imagine. one from Chris, Christian in Virginia, in America, um, really having a go at me for for sort of lumping you in with Nish um, and how you could have won. And don't do not do our boy dirty, Christian, ended the email. <laughs> ended the email. Don't with, we, well, I apologise, Christian. Over here. No, but thanks, uh, Christian, all the time. <laughs> thanks for your protective. Hopefully this episode has gone some way to me undirtying the boy. It, it really has. I, actually, I, I mean, the, the, the uh, episodes of this I've heard before, I didn't feel uh, that I've been done that much for disservice, really. But people, no, can, be, just, you know, people can be very defensive uh, sometimes. That's... That's yeah. uh, the reward I get for uh, endlessly doing myself down. I think um, this is from Katie in Scotland. We'll just do, we'll just do this one because I really like this email. Um, when Tim Key was on the podcast, uh, he said that him and Alex have hugged once and they both hated it so much they vowed never to do it again. <laughs> Mark, had had you ever hugged Alex before the cuddle Alex task? Because it felt like watching two strangers who have never touched each other before trying to cuddle and not two people who've known each other for 20 years. I think I think that is accurate, yeah. I don't recall any hugs. I, I could have just given Alex a regular hug and said that does count as a special hug between us because by the standards <laughs> of the past 15 years. Um I'm now actively thinking about I'm thinking about stuff like you know stag nights and other we've certainly been in situations where it would have been normal I, there might have been drunken hugs but no there's both of us were 
sort of out of practice, it's fair to say. And the, the suit didn't really help either. He wasn't very huggably dressed. I, I, uh, I didn't think. No. So yeah, I, I think um, Tim and Alex and I have done many things together, but at no point have we had a proper day of hugging. No, it's fair to yeah. say. And that does come across in the task. It's true. Yeah, very good friends. You work together very well, but I, I tell you what, when lockdown came around and you got the opportunity to do things distanced, ah, you, absolutely you, delighted. You guys, really, you guys really leapt at it. Your chemistry really comes alive when you're in separate rooms. C- couldn't be happier doing Zoom stuff and not having to ever <laughs> see each other. Yeah, it's the format we were always looking for, really. <laughs> uh, Mark, thank you so much for coming back on the Taskmaster podcast. We, of course, always ask our guests to rate their experience on the podcast between one and five points. This is obviously. Uh, been um, quite an episode for you a lot of memories dredged up I don't know if that's uh, that affected your point score of your experience on the podcast but let's hear your points please Mark uh, so last time I awarded it five without hesitation and I've had an equally nice time this time but I think I'm going to say two points this time just <laughs> uh, in, in the sort of in the spirit of being swindled out of points which this episode is about just I so that you can fair. feel a tiny bit of the hurt uh, yeah. and oh, uh, betrayal <laughs> And hopefully listeners as well will will feel, uh, you know, uncomfortable and sad about that. And they, again, will be sharing um, some of what I had to live with that day. Thank you very much, Mark. Lovely episode, actually, with Mark. Big fan of that episode. Uh, Lots to talk about, lots to say. Um, I will be tweeting that video of me throwing... Uh, my trousers into the boot of my car once I've worked out how to blur out my number plate, although it's an old car, which I think has been scrapped. So I don't know the legality behind that. But I will be tweeting that video uh, as extra content to this podcast. It's rare that we do extra content because the podcast is itself extra content. Anyway, come back next week. We'll be talking about Series 5, Episode 6 with another fantastic special guest. Email us, taskmasterpodcast at gmail.com with your questions about that episode, about the series, about Taskmaster in general, or any guests that you'd like to see on in the future. Ask them questions in advance, and then when we interview them, we can ask them those questions. Thank you very much for listening. Goodbye. For more Taskmaster, subscribe now!